Relax your hands along your thighs. Turn your gaze low or close the eyes. And I want us to start by really checking in. Where are you landing this morning on your yoga mat? For the month of December, all of the classes circling around this thought of homecoming and how the practice, the mindset does and can indeed create a sense of home. Just coming back from my week at Kripalu, and Kripalu is um, translated as compassion. And so this absolute fullness of make sure you are being compassionate to you and your home base through each breath and through the movement. Nod your chin down to your chest and just kind of rock the head from side to side. No distinct beginning or end, just rocking, moving. You can get a little bit more of shoulders and chest involved, spine if you'd like, or not. And then do keep right ear over towards the right shoulder and actually kind of look over the right shoulder and extend the right fingertips out to the side. Watch the hand as you crawl it a little further out than you might typically and then take the top arm overhead. Nice full breath. And release it all back into the center. Do the same over to the second side. Rock the head over towards the left side, but then kind of tuck the chin and actually turn the head as if you're looking over the shoulder. Whether eyes are open or closed is up to you. And then walk the fingertips further out so you feel the weight shift towards the left side. And then take the right arm up and over. Big sort of rainbow sweep. breath. Let it come alive there and then exhale back to your center. Nod the chin down one more time. Take the hands behind the head and give the press of the head up into the hands. Finding your sense of length through the back of the body. Strength in the front side as you pull your navel in towards the spine. Release the hands, lift the head, open the eyes. Okay, come on over to all fours. Place the hands under the shoulders and knees underneath the line of the hips and do cat and cow. And really, don't feel stuck in this routine movement of cat and cow? Do you need to sort of shake a little bit more side to side or move more fully front to back here? Maybe all the way through child's pose as you pull up and through, kind of test it out. What's the best movement for you and cat and cow today? A little barrel rolling. Bodhi's coming down to join us. Hi, buddy. Give it a few rounds of breath and movement together there. Keep going. And then stretch into downward facing dog. Friends, I'm actually going to turn the volume up on the music from where I usually do today. So please interrupt and let me know if it becomes too loud. But uh, 
one of the pieces that Kripalu brought back to me was they use a lot of music in class and uh, just made me sort of miss that uh, we have it. It's usually a little bit low in my classes and see how the rhythms change you. Here in downward facing dog, pedal out the feet, letting the slow expansion of the music perhaps give you a sense of expansion in the body as well. And now lift the right leg up into the air, three-legged dog. Up, up, up. Point the toes, get it as high as you can. Turn the hip out to the side. And then square off the hips. The leg will go lower. And come forward to plank pose, keeping the right leg lifted. Straight arms look a little ahead of your hands here in plank. Tone in the abdomen. At any point, you could have the left knee down instead of lifted here. Stay in that leg lifted plank pose for three, two, one, and then lower flat down against the mat. Peel the chest up, cobra. And change to downward facing dog. Lift the left leg high now, three-legged dog, left side. And again, point all the way out to the toes and let the hip kind of open towards the side so you get a little bit more height. And usually the leg needs to lower quite a bit to re-square the hips now down towards the floor. So make that anterior hip point of the left side point down. And then keeping that come forward to plank. Again, toes or with the right knee down. Nice steady line, feel the heat coming into the core. Good, and then lower flat down. Cobra, press a bit into the hands and feet. You don't have to come all the way up yet. And press back to child's pose. Walk the hands on over towards the right side. Explore a bit there in the reach of the side body. Walk the hands across the center and on over to the second side. And back into the middle. Downward facing dog again, all the way up and back. Right leg high, three-legged dog. Now this time as you come forward, pull the knee into the chest and hover in plank. And then swing the foot all the way forward into your lunge. Help yourself out as needed to get into that long stride. Lift the right hand up and twisted lunge. And then lower it down, bring the hands to the waist and lift the torso upright. High lunge, or sometimes called crescent lunge with the back heel lifted here, arms to the sky. Lift your arms up. Exhale, lower the hands around the front leg before you go anywhere else. Stretch the right leg as straight as it'll go. Let the foot flex and pull the toes off of the mat. Nice opening through the back side of the leg there. And re-bend the knee, step through plank pose. Lower flat down to the mat. Peel the chest up, cobra. And change to downward facing dog. Letting the slow, steady beat of the music also lead into the slow, steady opening to practice. Lift the left leg high, three-legged dog now. Pull the knee into the chest, hover forward, stay there. 
Round the back like cat pose to hold that hover. And then swing the foot a little bit more through into your full low lunge. Take the twist, left hand high. Enjoy, feel your breath. Feel your body. Lower the hand back down and then hands to the waist. Keep the hips square to the front of the mat as you bring the torso upright. If you have tighter hips, low back, feel free to bend that back knee. I don't say that enough. And then the leg goes as straight as works for you. Arms to the sky if not already. Give it another couple of breaths. Lower the hands around the front foot, step through plank, lower down, cobra, downward facing dog. Have the feet at least hip distance apart, bend the knees a lot and walk your hands back to your feet so that you can hang over the bent knee forward fold ragdoll pose. Perhaps grab hold of the elbows, let your body sway, feel heavy and released here. Feel free to let a nice sigh out through the mouth. And roll it all the way up to standing. Shoulders up and back a couple of times. Nice. Take a walk to the front of the mat. Lift the right hand all the way up to the sky. Get two inches taller on that right side. And then lean over towards the left. Now your left hand can stay at the waist or hold on to the wrist. Interlace the fingers, whatever feels best to you in this crescent reach. Stay there a little longer. And then come back to center and release the right hand down. Do the same on the left side. So left hand goes all the way up. Get a little taller first. And then reach over to your side. You can kind of bump the hips a little bit the other way. Do the helpful things to you. And bring it back to center. Release. Hands straight out in front of you, shoulder height, bend your knees. Sit down low into your thighs, way down there. Try to push your belly down onto the thighs and sit your butt even a little bit lower. One more breath like that. And then forward fold. Inhale, half lift. Step back to downward facing dog. And we're going to start to speed up our pace here a little bit now. Lift the right leg up into the air, three-legged dog. And then keeping the right leg lifted, come forward to plank pose like we did at the beginning. Lower it all the way down to the mat. Lift for cobra. And go back to downward facing dog, lifting the right leg again to three-legged dog. Now step the right foot all the way through into that low lunge. Take the right hand high. Lower it down. Lift up to high lunge, arms overhead. Keep everything you're doing, but spend the back heel down so you get two flat feet to work with. Warrior one. Open it up to the side. Warrior two. Hips, shoulders face the side. Nice open energy of the body. Cartwheel the hands back down around the front foot. Step forward, both feet to the front of the mat. Inhale, half lift, extend from hips out to the crown of the head. Exhale, fold over. Stand up, arms to the sky. Palms together, center of the chest. Chair pose, Utkatasana. This time, arms go higher. Lift your chin, gaze up towards the fingertips. 
Be more vertical in your torso. Utkarasana. Exhale, forward fold. Half lift. Downward facing dog. Take your way back. Lift the left leg up, three-legged dog. Keep the leg lifted as high or as low as you wish as you come forward to plank. Stay with it as you control and lower down to the mat. Cobra and downward facing dog. Lift the left leg again, three-legged dog. Swing it all the way through into the low lunge and take the left hand to the sky, twist it, a revolve lunge. Lower the hand, come upright, high lunge. Keep the right heel lifted to start. Bend the back knee as needed here. And then the back leg has to go fully straight to spin the back heel down. Warrior one, still try to keep the hip shoulders mostly face to the front of the mat. Open it up, warrior two. As the energy of the body goes wide to the side length of the mat, still look over the front fingertips and control there. Lower the hands down around the front foot. Step forward, both feet to the front of the mat. Half lift, forward fold. Stand, reach the arms to the sky. Palms together, center of the chest. One more round with a little bit more add-ons. Go back to Utkatasana. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, half lift. Take it all the way back to downward facing dog. Lift the right leg high, three-legged dog. Come forward to plank pose, keeping the right leg lifted. Lower everything down against the mat. Cobra. Down dog, lift the right leg. Step it all the way through. Twist first, right hand high. Lower it down. You kind of have to recenter balance. Come upright. Arms to the sky. Take a breath. Keep it there and then spend the back heel down. Warrior one. Open it to the side. Warrior two. This time we're adding warrior three. So here's how I do that. Left hand to the waist, lift the back heel, and take the hips back around to the front. Put the weight onto the right leg, launch. Hinge at the hip, so I keep the hand on that left hip until I know, okay, I've found my space. And extend both arms out. Keep lifting the left leg up, up, up. Everything drifts back down to a low lunge. Give it a pause there. And then step forward, both feet to the front. Half lift. Nice, we've got this. Exhale, fold. Stand, arms to the sky. Palms to the center. Smile, take a breath. One more side, Utkatasana. Exhale, fold. Half lift, downward facing dog. Lift the left leg high, three-legged dog. Keep the leg lifted as you come forward to plank. Lower down, Chaturanga Dandasana. Cobra, peel the chest up. Down dog, three-legged dog, left leg high. Take the left foot all the way forward into that long, low lunge. Take your time to find your stride. And then add the twist, left arm up. Lower the left hand down, getting a little funky here in the music. Arms up, high lunge. 
Pick up the pace, the energy, even a little bit more. Spin the back heel down, warrior one. Warrior two, open it to the side. Keep gazing out over the front fingertips. It'll help as we transfer here to warrior three. So right hand to the right hip, lift the right heel, and spin it back to the front. Ready, launch onto the left leg, lift the right leg up and extend the right arm out. Think T shape in the body, bend the left knee as much as necessary to make it work. It all goes back to your low lunge, give it a pause. Step forward, half lift, forward fold. Stand up, reach both arms to the sky. Palms together, center of the chest. Let's close out this warm-up session with one more side bend. So both arms high this time. Interlace all 10 fingers. Send thumb and first finger up. Look forward, stretch. Lean your hands over to the left side. Push your hips to the right. Lean the shoulders back to keep the chest open. I always want to shortchange these, so I'm consciously staying for an extra breath. All right, back to the middle. Up and over, second side. Use the breath to stay aware, stay home in the body as you move. Come back to center, exhale, forward fold, touch your toes. Make the legs as straight as they'll go while you touch the floor. Pause there for a good stretch down the back side of the legs. Change to plank position. And then lower flat down to the yoga mat. Roll to the side so that your belly's open. So I'm rolled onto my left side. I'm going to take the right hand into the center of the body and then roll back flat down onto that. Do the same on the second side. You try to take your left hand to the center of the body. And I'm going to change up because I've got a microphone here, and so that's not going to work, but you stay belly flat down. You're looking at your mat or like forehead literally on the mat. Lift your right leg up and try to extend it a little further back and then drop it down. Do the same on the second side. Left leg up, extend it further back and drop it down. Now for even half of a second, can you inhale, nice full breath. Roll a little bit more forward onto those shoulders and lift both legs up at the same time. See how high they can go. It's higher than you probably think they are, I promise. And then lower it down. Extract your hands. Push back to child's pose. And come up to all fours. Lift your right leg up and back here in all fours. Just like you did lying on your belly, try to extend it a little further back. Imagine a little release out of the hip socket, like trying to get your foot even two inches further. And then left arm out in front, opposite arm and leg, bird dog pose. We do these. Hug the knee into the chest, elbow into the chest, and extend out. Now feel it more like a flow with the breath, just coming in and going out. As you breathe in, then move the body. As you breathe out, then move the body. Just back and forth here. Go at your own pace. Let it connect with your breath. In and out. A few more times. Okay, keep elbow and knee in, hover. Extend it straight out, hover. 
Lower the left hand, lower the right knee. Easy position in terms of how we're placing. We've seen this one a lot. Bird dog pose, lift the left leg up. My extra ask here is can you get those toes to feel as though they're floated two inches further to the back of the mat, just from stretching the muscle along the bone. And then right hand out. Find your bounce. And then move with it. Elbow and knee in and extend. Go fast, go slow, change your tempo. But try to let the tempo and rhythm move with your breath. In and out here. You've got it. Keep going. Now hold elbow and knee in. Hover. And extend and hold. Set it back down. Kneeling position. So on your knees, come to kneeling. Hips right over the line of the knees. Take the hands straight out in front of you like we did shoulder height in Utkatasana. This time, instead of bending into the legs and thighs, we think of lifting up and extending through the torso. And spine, look at your fingertips, but lean your shoulders back in that spinal extension. And then come back up to neutral. Let this one move a bit like the bird dog pose we did just a moment before. Lean a little back and then come upright. Let the thighs lean back, hips lean back as the torso continues to extend and come back to neutral. So you're challenging, strengthening in the front of the quads with a back bending shape and opening along the heart. Do it one more time, hands out, camel pose. And then you might guess we're gonna find our camel and stay with it. So as you lean back in the thighs, quads should really pull up and strengthen. Take the hands either to your hips or to your heels. Open the chin a little bit so your eyes can look up to the sky, but not back. And then one hand at a time out in front, neutral, and finally to all fours. Downward facing dog, tuck the toes, lift the hips. From downward facing dog, listen up here, bend your knees a lot. So that should give you a little bit more agility to move. And go down to your right forearm, and then go down to your left forearm. Now straighten the legs more and you're in dolphin pose. Feel free to look forward or look back. And what if we tried that three-legged dog here in dolphin pose? Lift your right leg up. I usually scooch my left toes back as I try to come forward here into forearm plank with the right leg still lifted like we did in the beginning. And then two feet down as you lower all the way face down. Change the hands, lift yourself into cobra. And then change full up and back to downward facing dog. Let's try all that one more time. So if you bend your knees a lot, get a little bit of wiggle room. And then go down left forearm, right forearm. Walk the hips more forward over the line of the shoulders and make your legs a little straighter dolphin pose. Oh, it's a toughie for those shoulders. You've got it. Stay with it. Lift the left leg high. Squiggle those right toes back to change you into plank on your forearms with the left leg lifted. And then we set the foot down. 
Melt to the belly. Change the hands for cobra. Press into hands, top of the feet. Yeah, you guys are awesome. Downward facing dog. Push your way up and back. From down dog, side plank. Balance on your right hand, outer edge of the right foot. Stack the feet or step the left foot more forward. Lift the left hand to the sky. If you notice your hips drooping down, use the left foot to keep the hips lifted or even right knee down to keep the hips lifted. Find your way. And then we take it back to full plank. And onto the second side, left hand a little more forward than the right so that you have that left shoulder drawn back from the line of the wrist. Come on over, stack the feet or use that right foot as a helper. Yeah, feel it full here. Back to plank. Let's take it down. Vinyasa flow, lift the chest. Child's pose, push back. Downward facing dog. Good news to some, I'll get us off of our hands for quite a while here. Walk your hands back to your feet. The flip side of that, when the hands aren't down, usually means we're balancing on one foot. Pull your right knee up and into your chest. Hug the front of your shin and lift the knee higher. Extend the right leg out in front of you. Now, how you do that is a bit up to you. You could cross the hands under your thigh. Hold on to your side of the foot or your big toe. If you fall, wiggle out of it. Just try to come back. There's no rush because I'm keeping you right here. You've got a few more breaths. Left hand free. Play with it. How is it best for you to balance? Two feet back down onto the mat. Pause in Tadasana before you do the other side. Where are you balanced? Where are you home? Okay, left knee up and into your chest. I like to flex my foot so that the whole leg is really engaged and strong. Try it. And then extend the left leg more out in front of you. Another option might be hands at the waist for more of that levitating sage pose. Or hand around the foot goes to hand and foot pose. <laughs> Pull up on your standing leg, lift the kneecap, tone the quad. Broaden across the collarbone, turn the corners of your mouth up. It'll help. Stand on two feet. Give it a little bit of a shake. Very similar thing. Instead of going forward with the leg, we're going to take it out to the side. So right knee comes back up into the chest. Hold the front just like you started. But now just the right hand gets to keep holding onto the shin and externally rotate out to the side. Same options, hands can come to the waist, hook the arm under the thigh, try grabbing hold of the outside of the foot or piece fingers around your big toe. It's not about getting the leg all the way straight, but instead can we keep these lines that we're building and slowly move towards a straighter lifted leg. If you're like me, the right hip wants to lift up. Try to keep the hips balanced. Same opening. Sweet Adele to help us out. Second side. Lift the left knee up into the chest. 
Hold the front with both hands. Find that steadiness first. Maybe you're leaning back against a wall to really find your sense of homecoming. Compassion. It's all about. And then the leg goes out to the side. Play with your extension. No way to do this one wrong. So that opposite hand, where does it feel best for you? Is it out, up, along the side of the body, wherever? Wobbles, bobbles, they all help us know where's that next step. Lower it down. As you shake it out, come back to the front end of the mat. Hands at the hips, right foot forward, step the left foot back. Do you find a bend in the back knee? Maybe just a few inches above the ground? First turn the pelvis and tilt it forward. This is usually the easier thing to people so that your belly kind of spills out over your front thigh. And then as much as we can, we want to think of letting that tailbone go straight down to the floor, which should bring your belly away from the thigh, shoulders right over the line of our hips. And then keep all of that and go to a straighter left leg. Push through the heel. Push, push, push. Wrap the right elbow under the left and do eagle arms here. Front of the palm, back of the palm, or hold the shoulders. And specifically, if you're caring for a shoulder concern, injury, hold on to those shoulders. Give it the most compassion. Eagle pose, step the back foot all the way up and around. Ooh. Go easy on yourself in this balance. All stages, all ages, finding our way today different than the next. Back to your high lunge, unwrap the leg. Unwrap the arms, take them wide, goddess arms, bend at the elbows. <sighs> you, powerful. Take the hands down around the front foot. Step forward. Uttanasana, as you're standing forward, fold. You can take it more with a bent knee and a hang or a straighter leg. All right, picking it up here a bit for the second side. Left foot forward, right foot back. Take the hands to the waist, lift the torso. Check it out here, bend the back knee. Spill the pelvis forward to begin with. If you could see the line of your tailbone, it should be straighting, shooting to the straight back end of the mat, but we want to tuck it down to the floor, middle of the mat. Lift the arms high. Make the right leg as straight as it'll go, keeping that tailbone down. Wrap the left elbow under the right, wrap it back to the hands. Eagle pose, wrap the right leg over the left. How is it to find balance when the music feels a little bit more in chaos? Where do you go? Is it different? How are you tapping in? Hmm, anybody find that one easier? What does that say? I don't know. <laughs> go back to goddess. Lower both hands either side of the front foot. Step it forward. 
If you tried a very bent knee before, can you go to straighter legs now or vice versa? Malasana, yogi squat. Take your feet as wide as your mat. Turn the toes off. Keep the heels on. Sit as low into the legs as you can, keeping your feet flat on the mat. That might end for you with your butt higher, but lower. If you've got a yoga block handy, you might sit on it here. Malasana, yogi squat. Try to pull your torso upright. Just like in that high standing lunge, think tailbone down, head up. We're getting into a crab walk from here. Right hand behind you, fall onto it. Left hand behind you, fall onto it. Take inspiration from the five-year-old for this. She loves crab walk. Turn the fingers out to the side or to face towards your heels, and then lift your hips as high as you can. Take in a couple of full belly breaths and watch your breath. And then keeping the chin chucked, uh, chin tucked, lift your eyes more towards the sky. So as the chin is trying to stay tucked, giving you two, three chins, lift the eyes up just a bit. Can you rock a little bit forward and back? Feel the weight more in your hands, more in your feet. Music is perfect for this one. We're going to kick, 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 kick. Kick or don't, but I'm trying to get that weight to change a little bit from side to side. A little harder. If the shoulders are OK with it, Try the hands now, side to side. Go slower as needed, faster as works. Woo! Can you try just one hand, one foot on the ground? And I say, can you? Do you want to? Because it is yours. No wrong way to do this one. Keep yourself safe and held, though. And then butt down on the floor. Hug around your knees. You'll never be so happy to simply do boat pose. Extend the arms. Extend the legs. Boat pose. Want to try boat holding on to your big toes? Go for it. Does it make you fall? Fall down. Get back up. Try it again. We're here for five, four, three, two, one. Roll over to all fours. This yoga hour sequence is from Alexis Findlay. One thing I love about Alexis's class, there's always lion's breath included. Lift your right leg up and back like you were going towards that bird dog pose. But instead of bird dog, right knee behind your left knee. Sit back on either your heels or the ground in between. Hold on to your knees. Close your eyes. It helps. Lion's breath, we're all going to stick out our tongue and go, ah! Ready? Take a breath in. Ah! Make the people in your house wonder what the world is going on. Do it one more time. Ah! And then come out back to all fours. Second side. There's two sides of this. Lift the left leg up and back. I always feel a little hmm, unsure when I think, oh, this part's coming up. But the clearing that it gives is so nice. Try it on the second side. Close your eyes. Try to stick your tongue all the way to the chin and your eyeballs are looking up towards the sky as you do it. Ready? Breathe in. Ha! And you do it one more time. Get it all out. Ha! Around to all fours. Check out downward facing dog now. Whew.
From down dog, Bakasana. Crow pose, look to your hands, bring your knees forward, bend your elbows to set your knees on your upper arm bones or as far up as your armpits. With the toes staying down on the floor at first, send most of your weight forward into the hand so just the tip of the toes are on the floor and then one or both feet come up. Squeeze the inner edges of the feet towards each other Think navel back towards the spine, full of fire. Come down, plank pose. Plank, keep the fire. Lower it flat down. Cobra, big lift. Lower it all the way down and flip over onto your back. As you flip over onto your back, hug your knees into your chest. Hug just the right knee into your chest, extend the left leg down. And then cross the right leg over to the left side so you're in a supine twist, extend the right arm out. Friends, I'm going to give you some complicated add-ons to this. My caveat there is it is complicated. Take it or don't. The first complication, that left leg that's down along your mat, bend the knee and try to find right hand and left foot to hold on to each other. And then that top leg, can your left hand hold on to the right foot and stretch it out? You are a bit of a bow and arrow here. Aim true which pieces work for you. Shoot your arrow, come back into the center, hug knees to chest. Right leg down along the ground, hug just the left knee. Again, cross it over. So this works us into uh, yoga, we call this Tibetan weaponry, three. Bend the bottom knee, left hand holds on to the foot. I have to lift my head and shoulders to get there, and then I can usually lay it back down. And if you're adding top leg too, it's right hand to the outside of the left foot and try to stretch it out. Pull back on the bow. Where's your intention? What are you aiming towards? And release it. Hug the knees back into your chest. Okay, can we rock a little bit forward and back here? Give yourself a little momentum. And then instead of thinking about rocking on the spine or on that bony end of the spine, a little bit over towards the right, a little bit over towards the left. So you're giving yourself a little bit of massage without hitting the bony ends. Do it a couple more times, just rocking up and down. Of course, you can just hold knees to chest if the rocking is counter for you. And then do you end up back down on your back, soles of the feet to the mat, bridge pose, set it up for like book ends, bend at your elbows, the hands hold a great orb of energy and fullness, your intention, and then lift up into it. Lift your hips. Press down through your head, your shoulders, upper arm bones. Press down into your feet. Don't be afraid to play a little bit. Is it better for you to turn your toes out slightly, your knees out slightly at the same rate? What feels right? All right, I think the energy here is lifting us towards full wheel pose. Bring your butt back down for a moment. Take the hands at your shoulders with the fingers face towards your shoulders. See your elbows and your peripheral vision. Do bridge pose again in the legs. Press down through your feet, lift your hips. Stay either here or now press into your hands to lift your head. Come to the top of your head and stay there. Or lift your head off the mound by pressing into your hands again. I like to lift the heels to get a little rock forward and back. 
find your expression here in your belly up back bend. Lower it down, hug yourself, knees to chest, hug that best friend close in. Stretch your arms overhead, your legs out long, big full body stretch right here. Nicely done. For just a moment, roll back onto your belly. Make a cushion for your forehead with your hands. Bend both knees like windshield wipers. Take your legs from side to side. Help to release in the low back. You can do this longer if it feels nice. And then when you're ready, press the child's pose. Continue to release and round through mid to low back. Change to sit down on your seat, stretch your legs out in front of you. Cross the, oh, let me mirror you, cross the right foot over your left. Usually we do this in a twist. I actually want a uh, holy cow pose, which is heel towards the outer hip and the knees trying to go down towards each other and it's a fold forward, spill that pelvis more forward. Hoping to get some stretch in the hip, although I fully only feel this on the bottom leg. Your body's going to respond where it needs. And then we'll switch to the other side, cross the left foot over, tuck the heel towards the outer hip, knee down, and fold over. Good, come up, let's balance it with a little bit more external rotation. So bound angle, soles of the feet together, let the knees come out to the side. Hold on to your ankles or feet, sit up nice and tall. Maybe even hands behind you to really get the lift in the chest. Then fold it forward. A lot of really challenging pieces through this sequence. Nicely done. As you bow in here, tell yourself, good job. Thanks for showing up. Now release and feel a bit more softness as you pick your torso up, hug the knees in. And find your wiggle space. Is there any last little bits of movement you need, you want? Do that here. And then from that wiggling, from that last posture, where do you want to sit in silence? And indeed, take a seat or lie back along your mat. At first, place your hands over your body, whether you're sitting or lying. Lean into compassion and comfort here. 
as you make that connection to self. And then either keep the hands over yourself or I might invite you to turn the palms up along legs or your side. We've been through this virtual practice, kind of taking and feeling, enjoying the energy of those practicing now live with you. If you're watching this on recording, know that we've all been here with you too. Slowly bring yourself back to a seated position if you're lying back. And as you find your upright seat, bring palms together, thumbs to the sternum and Anjali Mudra. I like to keep a space in between the palms. It's a felt sense of spaciousness compassion for myself in this practice, for each of you in this practice, and the ways that we add and flow here. Let's close in the sound of Om. I'd like to sing Om three times today. Think first for self in heart, second for self in body, third for self in mind. Sing along, listen, tune it out, empty the breath here, take a deep breath in. I bow again to each of you, each other, this practice. Namaste.